we've had conversations before about how, how impactful it was for you to be able to support Ellen when she wasn't out, Ellen DeGeneres, and how she was able to be there for you in different moments. Um, and then ultimately what I've heard you say over the last year or so as we've talked about this idea of survivor pride and um, no longer feeling that shame and celebrating our survivorhood. Could you talk to us a little bit about your thoughts there? Okay, so when I went through this experience, I really realized I, I was in a, I was going to fall into a dark hole. I needed to, I needed to reach out and I needed to talk to as many people that would talk to me. Yeah, reach out to Snap. I reached out to Bishop's Accountability, and I had in, intense conversations with individuals. They shared. I learned so much about um, other male survivors and how their fit, fit their physical life um, plays out. I, I learned. I learned that it was the first time that the Pope had ever recognized that it wasn't a sin, mm. that it was a crime. Mm. It, was, it was a crime that was um, placed upon the individual, not a sin. Right, right. <laughs> and that as a, as a Catholic, yeah, yeah. it was releasing that I let go of my father's religion that he had raised me with, mm. I accept whatever and whatever anyone wanted to say about me. I'd pretty much said it all along for the last 20 years. Hmm. Um, I go of being the macho guy um, that the other guys thought I was. I was me. I was more me than ever. Wow. I took ownership of my story and I shared it as much as I possibly could. Yeah. And I brought the courage to others so that yeah. they could make those changes in their life. Um, I, I made changes with my wife so that when we had this intervention, she understood that I, I had made these um, shifts in my life, these changes in my life because of the courage that I was, I, I saw in others. And I learned that from, from, from Ellen, watching Ellen come out and share that with the world, she had everything you possibly could want, except love mm -hmm. and, and the ability to love someone publicly as herself. Right. right. And, when she made that choice, I mean, I'm sure she had a lot of reasons that I don't know, but I was part of it. And the big reason was when we, when we would go to the red carpet mm -hmm. and I would hold her, you know, I was, okay, let's go, you know, mm -hmm. let's go fold the world, which no, I didn't feel right. like we were fooling. She didn't think we were fooling anyone, but we were, we were holding right. hands, kissing on the red carpet. Mm -hmm. but she had to say goodbye to the, whoever she was dating at the time. And that, that moment, there was all this like, just not allowing to be who you are. Right. And when, you know, she did the puppy episode, which is the episode that she came out about being gay on and Ellen, she came out in public at the same time. Right, right. And it was tough. I mean, I, I, I was part of it. I couldn't, I couldn't um, perform um, because probably because of my shame mm. of, my dyslexia, but, um, you know, they, they did the show and then it became, so when I realized that when she came out, it was a very difficult thing for her to do. The whole world judged her for whatever they thought of whatever was going on. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> she lost her show that she had. Um, she, and then she, you know, it's like they, they tried to get rid of her, um, or right. she tried to get rid of herself. And then we see her on this TV show and she's, a uh, she makes people laugh. She yep. brings joy to everybody every single day. And it's because she took ownership of who she was. She was able to finally just be all of her, authentically right. who she was. We are all made. We are all unique. We are all gifted with certain things. Yeah. Yeah. And she was giving, she was finally found her bliss. She right. sacrificed everything in her life so that she could have love and true, you know, true love and self love. And, uh, great things came to her. And, you know, since I've shared amazing things have happened in my life, I have mm. a beautiful, I don't know if you heard her crying a little while ago, <laughs> a little baby girl, two months old, um, Lily, Lily Joe. She's so cute. Uh, my wife loves me more than ever. Mm. She accepts me for all that I've done in my life and who I am. I'm mm. constantly told that I'm a good father. Mm. And, uh, life is great because mm. of that. 
freedom that was given to me by speaking my truth. I took a quote from something you sent me the other day, and I think it really encapsulates what you're saying here, um, just about finding this new ending for yourself. Um, it's when we deny our story, it defines us. But when we take ownership of the hardest parts of our story, we get to write a new ending. And I, uh, I just, that was so meaningful. And maybe you have it, maybe I didn't copy it down right. Do you have different words there in front of you? No, 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 that's, uh, that's, that's, the, that's the quote. Um, that's pretty close to Brene Brown. <laughs> It's, it's good. It's good. And I love how you have, as you've owned your story, you've been able to let in more joy into your life. And uh, we had LaVon Proverbs speak last week, and she was talking about how you can only heal to the point that you allow pleasure into your life. You can only experience pleasure to the point where you allow healing. And um, just to see how how much it took to share your story. But once you have the transformation that's happened in your life, um, truly, truly powerful. 